is when we could actually get energy out of this waste, uh, which can be a added incentive for all of us. Now, uh, let me, uh, I have been putting this slide in many of my talks because I feel that this sensitizes how important it is to control the greenhouse gases, which we are uh, uh, emitting to the environment and polluting it. And uh, you can see here that I have three curves, blue, red, and a dotted curve. Uh, all of them basically show how all these gases are evolving. And by uh, the uh, beginning of this century, we already have uh, emissions, which we had never done in the last, uh, in, an, in the whole uh, lifetime of our uh, humanity on Earth. Now, because of this greenhouse effect, we have the environmental pollution, which is uh, at the same time, uh, we are having the global warming, which is creating other issues, which uh, just to show two of them I have shown here, which are because of the environmental degradation we have around us. Therefore, I think it is extremely important to handle the waste and uh, to try to make, once again, clean our environment. Now, uh, this is a slide which shows the global warming, which is happening, in fact, at this part of the curve, shows what is uh, basically happening. Then we had the Paris Convention where people have agreed that there are 192 signatories, they have agreed to clamp, reduce the CO2 emission, which is required to uh, different uh, uh, numbers and trying to stick to it. If we do that, then probably this point will go in this fashion, in case we do not do anything or we do not follow this Paris Convention, then this is how we would go. And then in the end of, uh, probably end of this century, you will have so much of uh, global warming that probably a very good uh, part of the globe will be underwater. Uh, probably even a place like Bombay and all might have uh, problem uh, uh, under such circumstances. What we would like to have is basically the green curve, which will bring us down and keep us in the green zone, which should probably clean our environment. So we are right now, our effort is somewhere here. And by 2030, what one would like to have is come to this point, which is still better than what uh, this blue curve will take us to in 2030 if we do not do anything. Therefore, I feel that we must be able to handle the situation in a very, very uh, multi-pronged attack if we must have. At the same time, we do need energy. GDP is increasing. And you know that the energy consumption has become a basically an index of a society. And therefore, many of the developing countries are uh, progressing at, the, uh, at a very, very uh, fast pace. And unfortunately, at this time, we say that by 2030, we will have probably a 60% growth. On the other hand, we still have a unfortunate situation that 1.6 billion people in, uh, at present in the globe, we still have these people without electricity. So we do need the uh, energy converted to electricity to bring our, bring our interiors up in terms of consumption of uh, uh, energy. At the same time, we need to keep the environment clean. So from that point of view, I think any waste management is a welcome, uh, welcome uh, proposition. 
and that is why I thought I would talk about this high tech uh, uh, high tech uh, proposition, which is being used in many places, but not very much, uh, definitely in our within our country and other places, because it talks of slightly higher uh, investment or upfront. But if you do an analysis and see on the long run, it could be a much better proposition. Towards the end of my talk, I would compare it with a one ton uh, per day plan of the today's uh, methods, what we use like incineration, et cetera. And this technology, how will the match in a four years time scale or something like that? So I'm talking of a plasma technology. I call it, it's the ultimate destroyer. So we know that all these hazardous waste and other waste, these are nothing but the legacies of our industrial manufacturing. So if we use a, a hot gas, plasma is nothing but a hot gas where you have electrons, ions, and other uh, uh, species which are in uh, uh, in a, a charged mode. Now, at such temperatures of the order of 5,000 degrees, nothing can survive. So that is why I call it the ultimate destroyer. At this kind of temperatures, even the most recalcitrant waste also can be handled. Now. This is what I, I call it the pyrolysis technique, which basically gasifies all these waste. Now, what is pyrolysis? I think all of you know probably that it is thermal disintegration of carbonaceous material into fragments of compounds in an oxygen-starved environment. That is extremely important. In the absence of oxygen, we burn it. We burn to uh, very high temperatures, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 degrees. Now, this technology basically exploits the thermochemical properties of plasma, which we call as the fourth state of matter, in converting solids to gases. What we do is that we burn it so hard that we convert it to gases and we will see that in a starved oxygen condition, it gives us very uh, acceptable uh, gaseous form, and then we can handle that probably and uh, take care of it. So what we do basically through these particles, and now anything that moves, you have kinetic energy. So this in the form of heat, we use it for decomposing the chemicals or the waste, basically. The presence of charged and excited species in a plasma environment, as I told, this is highly reactive, and this can, we can use it as a catalyst and catalyze homogeneous as well as heterogeneous chemical reactions. Under optimized process conditions, most likely compounds that form from the carbonaceous matter are basically methane, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and water molecules. So, and at such high temperatures and the high enthalpy, what we have, this inhibits formation of the hydrocarbons. So, that is another added advantage. Option of the product, gas product, gaseous product, what we have can be controlled by changing the gas with which we form the plasma. So uh, these are, continuing with this, if we are talking of a municipal solid waste, now if you burn it in these conditions, the product gas after pyrolysis, that means in the absence of oxygen at high temperature, what you have with predominantly, it will be basically carbon monoxide, hydrogen, hydrochloric acid, and 
high, uh, water, water vapor, uh, together with small amounts of fine carbon, which stays in solid, and it, it can solidify and settle there. So at the end of pyrolysis, what you have, this chemical composition, you have to very rapidly, because you have to bring it down to our normal temperatures. So you have to quench it very rapidly. This is the technique. Basically, this will avoid formation of all kinds of furans, dioxins, which are hazardous, which are not uh, conducive for our environment, what we are talking of. So product gas from pyrolysis, what we get, you can combustion it, and it can be done very efficiently and produce carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor as gaseous exhaust to the atmosphere. You can release them if you don't want them. And the slag, which is basically a monolith, it will have toxicity, which is orders of magnitude lower than what is allowed by our norms in the society, the CPCV norms uh, I'm talking of. So why do I talk of this plasma pyrolysis technology? I'm saying it is a homegrown technology. It has been developed by us. We have licensed it to our industries, some of the industries, and now they should be supported so that they can propagate this into our uh, societies and help us clean our uh, junk. Plasma pyrolysis is, it is actually emerging as a technology in the world which can destroy the organic waste in an environment friendly manner. In fact, the medical waste, we had uh, shown this and it was being used in few small hospitals way back, almost about 10 years back. However, not all the uh, medical waste, that is the syringe, et cetera, where uh, we had not got the permission to uh, use this technology for those. However, in 2015 March, the, in the Indian Gazette, if you see, it has allowed us to destroy all uh, medical waste with this technology, and they say that it is one of the best technologies you can have uh, as an environment-friendly uh, technology. So in this technology, what we are saying that we have a chamber in which we burn at very high temperature, we burn the waste, and what happens when we burn it, it disintegrates, to hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and lower carbonaceous gas because of the oxygen starved condition. And this is at very high temperature. Then we quench it and bring it down. And then we do what we want it. Uh, we can use it for whatever purpose we want. So the gases which are uh, 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 emitted or gases which are evolved, these are high calorific gases. So we can clean these gas by gas cleaning systems and then utilize it for useful applications. Actually, we have shown it has been successfully developed for safe disposal of different waste streams. Basically, you can have the right combination of gas to form the plasma and bring it to that high temperature and then burn it. So it fits in exactly in the existing scenario of our Make in India and Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, which has been promoted by our honorable prime minister. And this indigenous technology can provide a better environment friendly solution to our India's waste disposal problem. So this could be another technology which we could promote and bring in slowly to handle our waste. So as I already told, we need a hot plasma. How do we generate it? So, because to have the pyrolysis process, this hot plasma is generated with the help of a plasma torch. 
we call it a torch. It is a high, uh, very high voltage electric discharge, and that discharges the. Uh, you have a discharge, so uh, you have the gas broken down into its components. So you form a plasma at this very high temperature. Now this is produced in the main reactor. So you have a chamber, which I call it as the reactor. So I put it in this. So I have a thermal plasma. I can make it like a plume and put this, and it is in the absence of oxygen. Therefore, we put all this waste into that. So this high temperature will disintegrate the long change of molecules of, let us say, plastics or cloth or paper, even human bodies, actually human parts. And in this oxygen starved environment, this will disintegrate. And under this condition, which is known as the plasma pyrolysis, you would produce small molecules which will be like hydrogen, carbon monoxide, or methane. Because of this high temperature environment, we need the subsequent quenching, which will not allow them to recombine or have a recombination reaction. And therefore, all these toxic molecules, such as furans, dioxins, which I had told, or even aromatic hydrocarbons, they are not formed. Therefore, this technology disposes waste in a very environment friendly manner. And it is emerging as a rapidly in the whole world. This is how I could have a small plant in which I have, basically I bring in the waste. This is a drawing which is uh, quite old. Now all these, ways of introducing the waste, how we burn, all this has been modified. I will show you a schematic uh, at the end in the form of a video, which will give you an idea of the way we are planning to have things. So this is where we introduce the waste. And then we have, these are two, I introduced two graphite rods. Between them, I had the discharge from this very high temperature environment here inside the main chamber where I introduce the waste. And this basically burns the whole thing. And as I said, at this temperatures, all this gas, which are formed, basically they are formed in this primary chamber. And then it goes up into the secondary chamber, what we have. So here you have the different gases which will go out. And then here, what we have is, I call it the scrubber. Basically you scrub the gas because you want to clean it. Now in this scrubber, I call it the Venturi uh, scrubber. This mechanism is used so that you can have a very efficient scrubbing. You introduce steam, you introduce water with the steam, which basically will condense and become water, which you could actually tap it out. You have a cooling tower, which will basically cool the water and then bring it back to our chamber. And then uh, uh, it's a closed cycle. So the water is also conserved. And here you can have all the gases. They can be taken out from here, and then you can release it to the atmosphere. So these are the fans which you take care to cool these things. You have, you need a power supply because you need to have a very strong discharge here at very high temperatures. Therefore, you have a high voltage, high current power supply, which is fed from the uh, grid. But then in the absence of a power from the grid, we do have power failures in many, many, many places in the country. Then you can back it up with the DG set, the generator, which can keep your uh, plant running all the time so that you can continuously run it for the whole day. So this is a schematic of a plant which has been modified in many ways. 
And in fact, in my university, we are planning to put a prototype. We are planning to burn about 100 kgs per day about in, in about eight hours, and then show that all these benefits, how one can accrue from this kind of a system. And then this can be proposed for much bigger systems, which can be actually deployed for using, taking care of municipal solid waste or any other waste in hospitals, etc. This is how the combustion flame would look like. You would not like to burn it out. You would like to tap the gas from here and then take it the way you want. But in this, I'm just showing it to show that it has a lot of calorific value. So you can really burn it and then uh, it burns like uh, any other gas which is uh, having a calorific value. So this is at the exhaust, you could have the gas going out. So as I said, what are the benefits of uh, plasma pyrolysis technology? Unlike incinerator, which are being used very regularly nowadays to get rid of uh, waste, plasma technology does not generate toxic compounds such as furans, dioxins, etc. Therefore, and it doesn't even allow you to have polyaromatic uh, hydrocarbons. Therefore, we are talking of a fairly clean process. It destroys the waste in environment friendly manner because we are not forming these environment not so friendly uh, system uh, components of the environment. Now, this plasma technology can handle variety of waste. We have tried it out for hazardous uh, waste, biomedical waste, municipal uh, solid waste, and all kind of waste. EPEP, in fact, just to tell you that uh, in my old institute where we developed this and patented it, then we gave the license to uh, some industries. So one of the industry uh, has put it up for e-waste in the first smart city of India. That's the gift city in Gandhinagar, Ahmedabad. It's working there uh, for, I think, uh, for almost more than a year now. So it is a technology which can be used for all kinds of waste. And right now it is being, waste, it is being used for e-waste. Energy recovery from the waste in the form of heat, as I showed you, or we could have even electrical power. It is possible with plasma pyrolysis technology. And the best part, another good part, is that the organic mass reduces up to 99%. That means what you have, uh, the issue of the land mass, the, uh, the garbage we are piling up in the big cities, that can also be taken care of uh, uh, to almost uh, to a zero level. One percent is left, basically. So it can safeguard the precious land from our municipal waste dumping also. It eliminates and that has an indirect effect. It eliminates the possibility of diseases or pollution of the water, underground water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is something I would say which is desirable to have. Now, if we burn actually plastic, you get a lot of calorific values in the gases. So plasma pyrolysis of plastic waste provides a large quantity of carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and methane, and very small quantity of higher hydrocarbon gases, which is not desirable. This is extremely small uh, compared to whatever is the CPCB norms we have, orders of magnitude lower. Now, electrical energy, we are putting into the plasma, and this is consumed in melting, basically, the plastics in this sense. And in that process, we are dissociating the bonds. So we are degrading it. And then it goes into an endothermic reaction. So when we have the combustion of these gases which are liberated, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, methane, etc. Now, 
you have an exothermic reaction which takes place and this would release energy in the form of heat or light so you could then convert it to many other forms of energy you could then convert actually water to steam and you can utilize it for even steam generation steam uh, turbine this is how the reaction this is how the reaction goes when we talk of these reactions so in all the cases you see that you have uh, quite a high calorific values and we are having um, uh, get yeah, the uh, energy value in the gas which we could actually convert so in this kind of an exercise i have done an exercise which i will show you in the next slide where you could it this energy consumption is uh, gasification is uh, further uh, reduced and you can have a very very efficient way of converting it otherwise at very low capacity we are talking of about 1 kilowatt hour uh, energy for pyrolyzing about 1 kg of uh, plastic waste now the drier the waste is better it is because then you don't have to really handle the moisture content and if it is less than 10% it is extremely good so this is how you line up with you have professor Bra, we have another 6 minutes for your uh, conclusion okay so uh, here you can see that you have energy which is generated in uh, this case uh, for waste having calorific values anything which is beyond 3000 kilo calorie per kg or higher you can utilize it uh, to convert it to heat energy etc now if you compare it with normal uh, cooking gas what we have it is 12000 kilo calorie per kg but in the pyrolysis of these kind of uh, polyethylene waste or others uh, which have uh, something like 8500 kilo calorie per kilogram you uh, basically have you can say that almost uh, about 0.7 uh, kind of efficiency 0.7 kg of uh, the cooking gas cng you can have by this process which you are getting is a bonus because you are throwing away the garbage you are burning it and then converting it so that we can utilize it in a more economic fashion so this is something which can be done and it can be utilized similarly we can use it for medical waste problem where it basically competes with the incineration which we are doing that means burning of the waste material in open air that can never be complete therefore you are having lot of small quantities of many organic chlorinated organic compounds pathogens uh, pathogens are survived in this kind of a process along with that you produce furans dioxins etc which you do not want whereas if we use a pyrolysis instead of incineration you can get rid of all these issues so in this we have a high temperature and a high density inhibits the formation of this hydrocarbons let me go little to this slide shows you basically i am here showing you a suppose we decide to build a 1 ton per day that means per 8 hours operation pyrolysis plant and incineration which is conventional incineration system you can see that you have to invest to start with you have a heavy uh, investment is very high in this case you are investing 29 uh, uh, to actually 2 crores 93 lakhs whereas in this case uh, in the normal conventional incinerator you spend only 1.2 crores 
However, you have to maintain it. When you start maintaining, you can see that in 3.7 years of maintenance of this plant and this plant, finally you come down to you come down to a number which is exactly more or less same. That means on the long run, this is a more sustainable system. What uh, trying to utilize. And this would keep the environment clean in all these years when you use pyrolysis rather than uh, incinerator. So you can slowly convert this kind of a system to another system of pyrolysis. Similarly, you can have plasma vitrification. This is another uh, way of handling waste. And in this also, you have a similar advantage. So in conclusion, I would say that it is necessary to change over to high technology for waste management. Plasma pyrolysis it is a homegrown technology and it exactly fits into our Make in India uh, and Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, which we have started. So let me just show you this slide where it's a small video to capture the whole thing. So this is the kind of system one would have. You drop the waste here into this main chamber, then it goes up into the secondary chamber. Gases come here, you can scrub them and utilize this gas the way you want. These are different gases which are coming up. And then the the emission can be taken care of by letting it out into the atmosphere. And then if necessary, you can produce electricity also through steam generation. You can probably combine it to the main grid in the future. So it, anything which has a calorific value of this kind could give you uh, energy and uh, thereby producing electricity. Thank you, Professor Bora. Uh, probably we'll have a lot of questions uh, and then I'll come back to that. Uh, we have exceeded Thank you our very time. much. Thank you so much. Truly appreciate the detailed presentation. Uh, may I invite now Jyoti to come and share her presentation. Uh, and I apologize that we're uh, exceeded our time. So Jyoti, uh, it's up to you to shorten it a bit so that we can have some meaningful uh, discussions uh, post presentation. Jyoti, the platform is yours. Can you hear us? Jyoti, Lalita. Sir, I'm here. Lalita, okay. We cannot hear can Jyoti's hear voice. Yeah. Ah, yeah. We can Hello? hear you. Now. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you yes. hear me? Yes, yes. sir, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, ma'am. We can hear you. So, uh, basically, this screen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay, for inviting me for this important uh, webinar. And uh, as you are watching on the screen, my organization is Sri Mukti Sangatna, which is for the right-based issues of women. And then we are established in 1975. And uh, uh, we are working very hard to uplift the uh, women's status 
in the society. Next. Next. Yeah. So now, though we do a lot of other work like family counseling centers, theater, daycare centers, adolescence and station program, but for last 20 years, we are working for uh, waste management. Uh, basically, we came into waste uh, management not because of we are interested in waste, but we were interested in waste picker women. Uh, because usually, you see, uh, waste management is always taken as a very technical issue, environmental health issue, but uh, it has a humanitarian angle. And therefore, we have to consider poverty, equity, power, caste, gender, human behavior, political will, and good governance. They're all associated with waste management. Next. So at present, as we see uh, prevalent practices, we heard about the paralysis now, but so far in India, it's only dumping. And then of course, landfill gases are there. There is global warming, then of course, uh, it's, it's a risk for the health. And then incineration, which uh, generates vaccines. And uh, of course, the loss of precious natural resources. Next. Hello. Yeah. So when we started working with waste speakers, we thought, uh, what is the contribution of waste speakers? Usually, people look down uh, to waste speakers. And so, but they do very important work of reduction in waste handling transport, reduction in transport cost, then supply of raw material to recycling factories. This is also a very important factor. Then saving space at dumping ground, resource recovery in form of valuable compost, and of course, conservation of environment. So th this uh, role of theirs in protecting the environment is never considered. Next. So the major problem of waste makers is transport and storage. And they're explo exploited by middlemen, how we will see in the next slide. Next. So this is a pyramid where the, you can see the waste pickers at the, at the bottom. We look only at the waste and uh, then suddenly it goes to recyclers, but in between there are so many layers where uh, waste pickers are always at the bottom. Next. So we thought that we should train the people working in the informal sector and their involvement in collecting waste, separating dry waste, maintaining biogas plants, composting and all that. So this will help them to earn their livelihood, give value addition to their work in the dignified way. We also thought that, uh, I mean, I think if you think about it, uh, in every informal sector, whenever some technology comes, usually men grab it you know, women are always thrown out. So we wanted to teach some small technologies to women. Next. And then segregation, because no technology, of, of course, installation and pyrolysis don't need much uh, segregation, but not other technologies. And no municipality can have small plants or anything without, uh, without segregation. Next. If it's a mixed waste, it will everything will, will go to uh, dumping ground only. And mind you that even all our architecture colleges, civil engineering departments, nowhere they teach anything about waste management. Everywhere it is just a dumping. Now in the last five, six years, they have opened their eyes and they're looking at waste management. So when for searching for the technologies and giving add value addition to our women, we came across the technology which was uh, developed by scientists of Bhabha Atomic Research Center. This is known as Nisargaruna. Next. Hello. Next. Um, can you see the next slide? Yeah, it is already there. Uh, 
actually this is the process where no this yeah this this biodegradable waste generates biogas and compost and it is designed to repay the loan we had taken from nature now that's why nisarga runa means loan from nature uh, we actually from covid now we find out how expensive oxygen is and how important it is which is given to us by trees but we are deforesting we are cutting the trees indiscriminately and uh, oxygen is less uh, and then uh, we are using water also we are polluting water so all these things light also we are not using it properly not using much solar energy and all so we are getting so many things free from nature and that's a loan from nature and we have to repay it this is the basic principle be, uh, behind nisarga runa nisarga is nature runa is a loan next so actually this plant uh, was first developed in year 2000 and this is very cost effective eco friendly zero effluent biogas plant this is developed by dr sharath kale padmashri dr sharath kale who uh, has really developed this plant uh, i mean biogas is not uh, uh, unknown to us next next yes now let me say that uh, bio biogas is not unknown to us because uh, even before the freedom movement uh, gobar gas was used still it is used in our villages of course it has got cow dung as a homogeneous material here when we have to have a solution for biodegradable material which is generated in our city then it is huge it is huge every family generates at at least 0.5 kilo or 0.6 kilo depends again on uh, where you cook if you cook at home then uh, you have more wet waste if you cook uh, if you get something from outside or hotels you will have always more dry waste or in uh, other countries uh, developed countries they bring everything from the malls cut into pieces and all that processed food so they always have more packaging material and less wet waste uh, they are really wasting their waste because they what they do is they put it uh, some uh, some small machine in the tap of their basins and everything is uh, goes into that and uh, that machine and then everything goes and it is wasted all the material is wasted here in uh biogas plant you will see that all the biodegradable material all the biodegradable material can go into biogas plant but you have to very carefully segregate it next 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 yeah what can be degraded it is kitchen waste paper of course uh, whether we should put that into biogas plant is another debate but paper can go kitchen waste garden waste animal and abattoir waste and biomass from fields next next yeah what cannot be degraded is coconut and eggshells plastic glass metals or all dry waste all dry waste so you have to be very careful otherwise you know the, the plant can be spoiled if you put all these things which cannot be degraded so very fine sorting is necessary by putting the uh, material into biogas plant next so these are the steps in biogas production hydrolysis acetogenesis and methanogenesis next let me explain that i am not a technical person 
Sanjay has uh, explained to you my qualifications. And, but we have bought the technology from BRC and for almost from 2003, we are maintaining these plants. And as I said, we taught our women how to do this uh, biomethane, I mean, how to maintain these biogas plants. And another thing I would like to tell you that the plants are so simple. If you go outside other countries and if you see their biogas plant, they are so technical. Everything is computerized and only very technical persons only can maintain that. But like how uh, gobar gas plant can be maintained by, uh, by even the family members of a farmer here also in, uh, in Nisargurun plants also it can be maintained by even our illiterate women. Okay. So what are the benefits? This bioenergy gives, gives you alternate fuel, bioenergy, manual, it's environment generation and there are environmental benefits and health benefits. Next. So in Nisargaruna, one ton of waste generates 80 cubic meters of gas and 120 units of electricity and 60 kgs of organic manure. Next. So if you see how much waste we have and the bigger picture of dry and wet waste, I mean, this will, uh, uh, this will stress the importance of having such methods because composting for, on the large level is not advisable. Decentralized waste management is the only way. But even sometimes, let's take a city of Mumbai where there is no place for composting at all. Hardly society and everything, uh, I mean, all the space is required for parking the vehicles. So no place for waste. Dumping grounds are full. So in that case, such things as uh, instead of dumping around, we can have biogas plants there. So we have one lakh uh, metric ton of waste in India. Out of that, 50, 50 to 60 percent is wet waste. You have huge expenditure for municipal corporation only for dumping the waste on the dumping ground. Nothing else. Everything. And then there are lobbies. There are vested interest in transportation. Then waste pickers are marginalized as we have seen in the previous charts. Then there's a multiple handling of waste and there are emissions. Next. Next. So for that, this biogas plants are very important. Now, this is a rough drawing. I'm going to show you the detailed drawing also that we have to see what happens uh, in, as I earlier said, that when there is a gobar ga gas plant, you have cow dung, which is homogeneous. But municipal waste is not homogeneous. First, we have to sort out biodegradable waste. Then we have to put into the mixer, and then we have to use solar heater for that, to make it hot. And then you have to put into the first digester, and this is thermophilic uh, aerobic digester. Uh, then you have to put it into the methane holder, which is at the lower level. This is aerobic, this is anaerobic. This is the difference between the, uh, between the other plants and Nisargurun plants. And then after uh, the gas is produced, it is the whole residue goes for manure making. Okay. And the gas goes, uh, gas can be used for, I mean, for various purposes. There is a gas meter also you can put into that. So nothing goes waste. Nothing goes waste. Next. Yeah. I think uh, this is very, uh, I, I hope it is readable. Uh, if you'll see the flow, I want to show you the flow. Like uh, here, you know, the, the from the vehicle, the weight waste comes here. Uh, it is assumed that it is segregated here and then it is weighed and then it goes to the mixer and from mixer it goes to the first digester you can see the flow then of course in between your uh, solar water is added then uh, in the first digester air compressor uh, is used 
and then it goes to the secondary digestive and there it is a methane holder and then the uh, that goes for the purpose uh, various purposes and and uh, fuel uh, liquid whatever remaining liquid residue goes for the manure making now uh, if you see what it gives it gives you the of course uh, gas for cooking then it gives you uh, fuel now what is the use of this fuel if you go to sweden or other countries uh, where the biogas is produced and it is used you know all i mean in the buses in uh, sweden it is written that these buses are running on biogas so of course uh, you require batteries and all that uh, compressors um, to compress the gas and everything then also you can uh, use this gas for boiler you can use of course for the commercial uses in the hotels and you can also generate electricity so in pune if you see the municipality has put up biogas plants um, in the societies big societies i mean all the nearby uh, societies are giving their waste there and then the electricity is generated the whole road is lighted similarly if you see i'll show you the plant in mathiran this first iso uh, certificate received plant there also all the street lights are with biogas plant next there is one more uh, use uh, you see even for uh, cemeteries you know for the funerals you can use biogas and many times people are uh, because to save the trees they are preferring for electrical uh, cemeteries but instead of that uh, now if biogas is used you know see if it is a electric electrical cemetery then you have to uh, you know uh, keep it burning for longer time but if you use biogas you don't have to when the body comes then only you can uh, use that biogas and that's why it is it, it is quite economical and it's it's also saving trees so this is another use of biogas plant you can use it in the cemetery then why this uh, uh, you see in other plants if you see the, in the developed countries or i can say anaerobic plants um, the, the, they have to again purify that gas but here you know because there is a combination of hot water aeration and homogeneous mixtures 85% pure methane is released so because of the biogas again the impact on global warming is also reduced because uh, otherwise if you dump it a lot of methane is reduced and we all know what are how dangerous methane gas is so here it is trapped captured and used okay next so here of course Uh, maintenance of biogeochemical cycle the effective use of solar energy disposal of organic waste in environmental friendly way and also it is completely hygienic process is better for waste pickers because they, they are working there they have to just sort out the things and they are getting a fixed salary a uh, fixed time they don't have to roam around so there are many advantages for waste pickers also working in this next so when we burn the waste important uh, elements like phosphorus sulfur calcium magnesium in the waste dissipates into the air but when we have biogas or biogas technology next all this you know all this uh, metals and all go in back into the slurry and goes back to the soil so all the waste gets converted into manure and is, is given back to soil and carbohydrates are also converted into organic compounds and then ability of soil to hold water improves and soil remains fertile soil gets good quality nitrogen phosphorus and potassium and the the manure produced in this is a, is of a best quality i have to also say that we really need so much uh, so um, i mean such a huge quantity of organic fertilizers and which is here you know with the waste we can produce this organic fertilizer 
in a big way next so again if we start or if when we are dumping the waste we are also um, uh, having water pollution soil pollution then you see it's taking into dumping it on and putting it there so here you know if you get this uh, convert this into biogas in decentralized way then reduction in municipalities expenses on vehicles and transport of course it, there is alternative fuel and also because we are not uh, sending it uh, to dumping grounds then reduction in emissions due to transport which is not only the uh, diesel reduction but also so much emission is there when we are transporting all the waste to, at the one particular dumping ground the air pollution and then of course uh, we are importing diesel so that is also saved and we can use instead biogas as a fuel next then of course as we have to segregate it properly we are we can send our all dry waste to factories back for recycling of course creating more employment opportunities because for uh, if you segregate the waste then it is further segregated and goes to recycling factories and this is also uh, there is a less extraction of natural resources repayment of loan to nature in proper form because otherwise we are using everything all the material we are destroying and then we are again digging the earth next yes this uh, we have already said this is of course improvement over conventional gobar gas plants and you have to take care of this because as the material uh, is not homogeneous so we have to see that it is completely homogenized so you have to have trained personnel you just can can't say that uh, uh, you can add anything there then very carefully you have to sort out the waste then uh, also in any uh, biodegradable waste can be processed you cannot have the big bones coconut shells you have to remove we have said it earlier next yes there is a high quality weedless odorless organic manure helps in improving soil fertility and water retention facility zero effluents reuse of water in the process you know the, all the water when you take out the manure whatever water remains that can be again pumped back into the system and it can be added you know to the when we are uh, processing the waste you can put it in the solar this in the solar uh, panels require fresh water but whatever other uh, water we require for mixing the waste we can add this water again and then first 21 days you don't get any gases but once the gas generation starts it is continuous so initially com initial com commissioning period of 21 days is there and also you have to gradually increase the uh, the amount of waste suppose it is 1 ton capacity from first day you cannot add 1 ton you have to add 200 first then another 200 300 like that it will go next so i'm showing you some biogas plant how they look uh, left hand side uh, uh, top is a tcs tata uh, tcs uh, in thane and it's such a beautiful premises and you can see the biogas plant also looks uh, uh, i mean beautiful in this whole thing it, even if you uh, walk from there you you won't realize that this is a biogas plant then the right hand side is from uh, uh, from gujarat then uh, bottom left hand side is symbiosis which is a very big educational institute where there are hostels and all under canteen 
so that is there and they are generating electricity and right hand side uh, uh, bottom as i earlier said this is at mathiran mathiran is a hill station in uh, near mumbai and there also they are using all the hotel waste comes here then uh, all the waste is generated into gas and then it is generated into electricity and the street lights are there because of this and it is uh, iso certified plant so there are many such plants of course um, people feel that the municipalities you know usually uh, municipalities don't take biogas plants seriously and my experience is that municipalities never give segregated waste or they dump the waste you know so it takes so much time to even segregate that waste because suppose you get hotel waste but so many things you know small small things into that like butter papers are there so many things are there some small plastic is there chutney is there then chutney is into a small packet and all that so many things tools are there so if you don't give properly i mean that, those instructions should be given to the hotels that uh, no dry waste should go into this you cannot put it directly here to again you know it's it's so dirty because hotel waste you get next day so it is smelling like anything so you have to see that the strict uh, warning to hotels that they should not give uh, dry waste at all into that so municipality feels it is another you know money making machine so it is not like that you have to look at biogas plants at uh, waste disposing next and here you know in composting you require a lot of space in biogas you don't require that kind of space in the same space you can add waste every day so this is a small 100 kilo biogas plant at tata institute of social sciences there is a there is another big 500 kilo also but this is a small 100 kilo plant and you, as you will see our women are really experts in maintaining this biogas plant you can see the manual next next yeah in this picture you can see dr kare this is a plant in brc itself anushakti nagar there are three plants there. i i think there are four plants and see composting is also there so there are different components now next this is going into the mixer this tray women are sorting it properly and then again sending it to the mixer i can see now the segregation and feeding platform next yeah is the mixer is like just our washing machine mixer has to be very powerful but also you have to handle it properly because you can't put coconut shell here then the the mixer will just stop working next yes these are feeding platforms i mean if you don't want to use that tray you can even at the side also you can segregate the waste continuously next So there is air compressor for the first digester, primary digester. Next, gas blower. next jati maybe you, you can tell yeah. us what is your learning from some of these projects on uh, yeah 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 know? that i'm coming to there are only two slides left next yes next go fast lalita go fast lalita we'll stop here lalita uh, 
actually what's happening in all these years has seen that there is growing consumerism even after covid we, we are seeing that uh, uh, one time use plastic is really uh, available everywhere and it is used um, like anything and uh, we don't know what to do with it and especially as uh, my earlier speaker has already said dr bora that uh, if we are really using this waste indiscriminately then how can i mean what happens to the slogan of reduce when continuously we are using the material the one time use material in covid so much one time material is used and people have forgotten they are scared and they have forgotten to even segregate the waste and then all this waste again is going to dumping ground in a mixed form all this can go to uh, as a hazardous waste waste if people segregate it there are not many plants in mumbai whereas actually mumbai can have such plants and have uh, fuel for buses or, or rather transport but but i mean people are not serious about biogas when they don't understand the importance of biogas plants then uh, use and throw attitude this attitude was not there we are we are always a recycling country and this attitude has now growing up so much that we have to again you know after covid people have forgotten to segregate the waste and every time we have to go to people and uh, request them again and again to segregate the waste to segregate the waste because long time as uh, earlier it has been explained that pyrolysis is it's very expensive process or even incineration and incineration is dangerous to human lives but even if you suppose don't get this thing but still it is very expensive process and all the at taluka level at village level so much waste is there and we cannot afford to have such very expensive technology so decentralized waste management is the only way where you can have small biogas plants 100 kilo 200 kilo can uh, community biogas plants where even women's groups can cook something i mean what do you do with the gas or like <laughs> like you know people when we do composting people ask us what is to be done with the composting why should we do compost what is the use of compost in cities you can have terrace gardening or you can send it to farmers so of course one advantage with biogas plant is that you you can uh, see the quality of compost in com in general com general composting or composting at home you don't know the quality because you don't know what you are adding there and whether the compost is of the best quality but in biogas again you can see you can you can test that compost because it is in the large quantity here in 5 kilo or 10 kilos you cannot the tests are so expensive but in the biogas plant you can have a good this thing so there should be combination of all the material because as we are using this material and generating reject waste so much then at that time i do not know whether sometimes we might require but on the very larger and central level the technologies like pyrolysis we don't i mean uh, the decentralized manage, management is the most important and then whatever remains can go into some other technology but first of all doing composting first of all doing um, i mean home composting then community composting then biogas and then fourth will be uh, the other technologies but there should be of course i mean i am for no burn technologies because we are really destroying all the material and we are again digging as said this earlier also so i feel that uh, decentralized waste management can be the solution for our uh, this thing and it might be centralized like because another thing about uh, biogas is that if you have agricultural produce you will get more manure if you have hotel waste and oily this thing then you will get more gas so jyoti ha yes if you permit me i would like to open the platform for question and answer so that yes, some definitely. of the things that you were saying yeah uh, thank you to both the speakers uh, professor bora and jyoti
uh, may I invite you now questions. Uh, participants, unmute yourself and uh, ask your questions directly to the two speakers. I think sir is not there. I'm there. Yeah. yeah. To get better bandwidth, I have uh, masked myself. Okay. Okay. So, so participants, welcome to the question and answer session. Yes, Amrita. Sir, uh, I had a question for you. Uh, like uh, we have been doing waste management since a long time, like many organizations, even Sanjay sir is doing. Like, but have you seen awareness among the people? Their mindset have changed, like uh, using a biogas or any source of energy from waste. Uh, away. Making people aware is a very difficult uh, thing. I have seen that we, when we go to a bigger scientist colonies also, the people are very reluctant to segregate the waste. I mean, leave aside uh, illiterate. <laughs> but people who know the importance of segregation, so you have to make efforts, you know, and there should be carrot and stick approach. So you should give rewards who is segregating and you should have also fine or stick for the people who are not segregating. It's not easy task. But there should be a political will because I've seen the political leaders are always uh, going back, you know, because it's a bitter pill you have to give to people. And uh, sir, uh, as you are a VC of a great college, university, so do you think education can bring awareness among the generation and that can be, can be transferred to the elders? I think uh, that is it's a good question. And uh, I would say that uh, this is probably the only way, unless you inculcate these habits, these uh, uh, required uh, habits to our children at lower uh, at younger age yes. or to the school level students. And in fact, we have started in the university because our university has all affiliated engineering colleges of Assam. So there are some which are in the interior places. So what we do, we go, I mean, you know that uh, now everybody is supposed to uh, uh, you know, adopt a few villages, etc. So what we do, even if we do not adapt, we go have these kind of activities done with them in the, not only in the schools, we first go in the schools, then we go little beyond to the villages. And uh, if you keep doing it, you got to have patience. And I would say, I have come to this place actually just four years back. I was in Gujarat most of my life, as you heard from Guptaji. So, uh, but I would say that uh, we have seen in some of the villages, we have seen uh, uh, understanding or uh, the reason why we need to uh, be clean, uh, need to segregate things so that we can handle it in different ways. And, uh, but it's a long process. And probably when these children will grow up, then you will have a very educated, in this sense, the very educated uh, adults in the country, in the interiors, then these things will fall in place, like in the West probably. Otherwise, even I know that uh, uh, people, Indians, staying abroad. I can give you a story. You know, I was staying in uh, Accent Province, which is a tourist place, and 
we have a small hillock close to it, which is a, a place where in the weekends you have always uh, a hiking. People go climb to different heights and come back. It's not very tall. You can come back by evening. So our uh, international organization, uh, to keep our international crowd busy, we used to have this kind of uh, uh, ex expedition. So in one of them, we had a few Indians, along with our uh, colleagues from Europe and US and other places, Chinese also. And so we started it. And then uh, just in the first hall, it was time for breakfast. So, you know, everybody carries these things. So Indians carry their own, even uh, parotta and other things. So open it. And then we threw the, uh, the waste right there, uh, these papers. And uh, we saw that one of our colleagues, an European lady, she took one of her extra plastic bag and put it in. So we went and uh, we reached on top. We had lunch. Again, the same thing she did. And then we came down. She carried this load all the way up and down. And we had all educated people in that group. But, I mean, uh, a couple of Indians realized it, but they gave a hood to it. And uh, the whole thing, it looks so bad that even knowing the necessity of uh, segregating or not, uh, you know, littering all around, uh, we continue doing the same things. And that poor lady brought the whole thing down and threw it into a uh, dustbin, which was there at, uh, in the ground point. So I think it has to come with the generation to the next generation. And it takes time. And if we can do a quick work in it, uh, it will be much better. Thank you, Professor Bora. Next question, please. May I add something here? Okay. Please, madam, sure. you have more experience, please. Uh, I feel that uh, if you really uh, see the Western countries, up till now, means till two years back, all these countries were sending all their reject waste to third world countries in yeah. the boats because the plane won't take it. So, you know, th there was such a big problem with this waste and uh, they were showing that, oh, we are very clean. Okay. <laughs> but the waste was all accepted by our China. Now they're sending it to Africa because China was the first country who, uh, who refused to accept their waste two years ago. Now India has also come there and uh, small countries like uh, Philippines and all sent back their waste to France. So it's a question of attitude also. It's not only uh, education, but the attitude and uh, you know your uh, attitude towards nature is also important. Like what's happening in the US now because so, so many, I mean, the trees are burned and so many things are happening. No, uh, nobody bothers about the environment. They are just doing whatever they want. So. So I think we have to be very careful about the environment also and tell people that you are not doing this segregation of waste, not for municipality. It is for your own gen next generation. For your own city, you are doing it. For climate change, you are doing it. If when people will understand that, then only the change will happen. Thanks, Jyoti. Next question. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, sir and ma'am. I am uh, Shishandu. Uh, I have a question uh, first for Sir, that uh, the pyrolysis program, the, the technique that was shown, uh, that seems really good uh, and having quite a potential. But I also want to know what are the drawbacks of that? Like, what are the major drawbacks of this because of which maybe till now we are not having such uh, things uh, implemented, maybe? So this is my first question, if Sir can... Be Major drawback is the expense. It's very mm. expensive. In fact, you will uh, way back, probably even 20 years back, DST gave us a project to make and the small plants, which can take care of about uh, 30 beds and beyond, this kind of 
uh, small plants were to be put. So we actually put in many places, I think almost about 12 places, including the cancer hospital in uh, Ahmedabad. And that is the only place where we have the plant running still. But in all other places, simply because, I mean, it doesn't need any uh, much of uh, uh, maintenance also. All you need to do is that the graphite rods have to be changed so that you can uh, you know, ignite the gas inside. And those graphite rods also, we developed a local party in Ahmedabad and you can buy it in few rupees. And two of them, you need probably two sets will be required for eight hours or something like that. But I think it is, then there are other lobbies which work against it and things like that. So I think we have to do away with these things. We have to realize that there are different technologies which can be used for different purposes. And finally, the goal is that you have all the waste of all kinds taken care of by different technologies. I think nowadays we are uh, moving into the the arena of uh, technology, uh, right from, uh, uh, I mean, one end is basically the Sarguna, and the other end, I would say, is the pyrolysis, what we saw today. And both can sit side by side and utilize for different purposes. This is how we have to take the whole thing ahead, because we need to handle waste. There is no way. Otherwise, the whole environment, the way we are polluting it. I mean, uh, our children will have a uh, very difficult time. Even we ourselves, we are having problems. Thank you, sir. For, and uh, I have a second uh, question or maybe a comment, maybe I can say on which I would like both uh, ma'am and sir to maybe just say a few lines. One is that uh, the kind of waste that our country is producing, the amount as we see in numbers, and when we are talking about waste management, we are just looking at the bottom part where uh, things have already become a waste. And these days we are seeing that, you know, simple fruits and everything are coming in packaging. Unnecessary plastic packaging is increasing, especially in the COVID-19 times also. And uh, so one of my simple question is when we study in textbooks, we always study reduce, reuse, recycle. Recycle being the last option to do and reduction of waste being the first thing to do. But when it comes to management of waste or waste management term, the most things that I personally listen is of how we can manage the waste already generated. Hardly any discussions on how we can reduce the amount of waste being created at the first place, uh, for which the bigger companies and all are quite responsible, the kind of packaging and everything that they're using. So uh, any comment on it, both from sir and ma'am about this part? Go ahead, ma'am. Actually, there are laws in, in 2016, the first uh, the laws were, uh, laws or rules were uh, given by the government. Uh, actually, there was a EPR, Extended Producers Responsibility for the packaging industry also. And those who are, and they have been given three years time to phase out, but it is not even started. Now, again, they have asked for the uh, uh, again for the suggestions and all for the new law. So uh, it, it was in those rules it is written that those who are I mean see if you see 2016 rules it divided everything into three parts. First part is that uh, the municipalities are responsible but they are not the only people responsible. People who are actually generating the waste are also responsible that is citizens and third is producers are responsible. Manufacturers are responsible who are uh, using this kind of waste. Uh, reject waste and uh, one-time use waste and all that and you know the medicines will not reach but this kind of waste such as tobacco everything will go even to the village level so they have such a big uh, marketing system so but they don't have collection system and then all this thing goes into the gutters and rivers and yeah. all that we are going to uh, answer that and therefore there is no reduction unless and until government make strict rules for packaging industry, strict rules for um, manufacturers and 
we we are demanding the waste pickers organizations are demanding that under the epr the money which is taken by this manufacturers sh should be used as a support price for uh, management of uh, reject waste or uh, low value plastic waste then only this can this uh, will end you know otherwise it will go on you know we will have then we will have bigger uh, plants like incinerators or pyrolysis there are lobbies available for incinerator so many lobbies are there to uh, yes yeah so so reduction is the most important i also said in my presentation that reduction is most important nobody talks about it professor bora if you want have a comment on this no i think what ma'am says is correct actually unless we reduce this landfill will continue i will tell you maybe another experience of mine there is a, a, a company in bangalore called triton and triton makes these valve tubes which we put in the uh, cycle uh, uh, right from cycle up to trucks and everywhere so uh, they were generating a lot of effluent chemical effluent and waste in bangalore so one fine day bangalore municipality came and told them that look if you are producing all these things you have to go 40 kilometers away they were given a place where they were to go and dump it uh, uh, underground so they thought that's again transportation comes in and all this it's a big headache so they came around so they told us that uh, this is an issue how do we do it so what we gave we gave them a carburizing plant uh, a plasma uh, system actually a very uh, not very complicated it's fairly simple in which they could work on this brass piece you carburize it and then you can put that rubber uh, sleeve on top of it and it's permanently glues so they save that 40000 liters of water every day all the effluent they don't have to transport it all the way all they had to do was to change the mind shape mindset and switch over to another technology and uh, they are still using it and uh, this is something which one have to one has to see that it is not that you produce the waste because there is some waste management system which will take care of it you must be able to minimize it right in the beginning actually by utilizing different kind of technologies i would say even nisarguna it's a technology actually it's so nice beautiful technology which is giving you uh, i mean it it doesn't harm the environment at all and it takes care of the things right in the beginning all you need to do is sort it out properly so you need people at that level to be trained and that takes care of it so i think we need to think of minimizing the generation of this waste in all levels water all the more reason uh, i think uh, uh, you must be reading all around that we'll very soon have no water to drink actually in all the places in the country in fact even today i know when i was in uh, uh, gujarat rajkot a good city everybody knows about it there i used to hear my uh, friends telling that they used to get few buckets of water every alternate day to handle themselves even 10 years back so this is the situation i think we need to think about these things and we need to tell it to our children probably not in a very very uh, uh, a way we put it into textbook and things like that but in a play toy way it is the experiential uh, education which we need to bring in actually thank you professor bora uh, maybe I, i'll give you a final comment and then we'll end the session we have exceeded our time hugely today but i guess this must have been interesting for all the participants uh, to, to answer uh, certain this question one of the one of the reason india has failed is 
the laws on the prevention of generating waste. What you are talking about, reduce, reuse, recycle, is actually promoting recycling at different levels. So reducing could be a small packaging into big packaging. So instead of buying a 200 gram uh, soap bar, you might buy like to buy a one kilo soap bar. So that's what traditionally it means. But if you look at the new waste pyramid that has been developed in the developed countries, particularly the Western European countries, it actually prevents waste from generating. So for example, to just to give you very clear examples, you stop production of uh, plastic spoon, thermocols, uh, plastic bottles, uh, glasses, and all that. So if you completely ban it, knowing that these are not the products that can get into recycling, you are actually preventing it from generation. This is something missing. Though the prime minister did allow it from the ramparts of the red fort that a certain items of one-time disposable plastics will be not generated, it has not happened. This is a mere... Uh, policy on paper and will not be implemented, I can give you guarantee because the industrial plastic lobby in India is so strong, which comes of Ambani's uh, uh, and uh, Reliance uh, and also the public sectors. So it's not going to happen, uh, at least in India. And COVID has given a new lease of life for disposable plastics. Everything now is coming in the disposal, even though it is not required at all. I, 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 one fails to understand, you eat it, uh, eat at home in your ceramic plates, in your steel plates or glass plates. But in the quarantine center, you say, no, no, it's not hygienic. You have to give it uh, in a plastic disposable plate and a spoon and glass. Everything is plastic. So I'm managing 42 quarantine centers and I can tell you what a mess it is currently. So th that's, where, that's where we come in uh, into prevention. There is nothing like preventing waste from generation in India. While many of the countries, uh, the, the thing that Jyoti talked about, extended producers' responsibility or EPR, is another medium, another tool for extending or promoting recycling. You are muted, sir. One question that... Uh, uh, no, not really. Uh, uh, I, I seem to be on. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We can yeah, hear. yeah. Now it's all right. So, so one, one thing, if these are the two technologies that we, one we talked about, uh, the plasma pyrolysis, the other about uh, biogas system, what, what are the... I'm, I'm, I'm getting calls, and so this is why... Uh, because these two technologies have not been adopted widely by the, by the municipalities. What at policy level or at what level we should deal with the municipality or the waste managers or waste authorities that both seem to be really, really good, but actually not practiced widely. So with those final comments, listening from both of you, we'd like to close this session. Thank you. Jyoti, why Thank is you. biogas not really Thank you, good? Sanjay. Sanjay. Pardon? I just wanted uh, uh, once you want a comment final from comment? you that why if biogas is so good, why it is not being adopted by the government, by the municipalities, by the community? No, these are wasted interests. That is the only thing. Wasted interest. Nothing okay. else. The propaganda Pro by incineration lobby and uh, and Actually, it doesn't require much. Let's see, Pune, they have done it. But again, there should be close monitoring and there should be an organization, uh, you know, I think uh, which is uh, which is maintaining it properly. There are so many combinations are there. Strict monitoring should be there. There is nothing bad in or nothing wrong with the technology. It's wrong with the management. Thank you, Jyoti. So you are indicating uh, waste governance deficit. Professor Bora, why is plasma pyrolysis not being adopted? As I told, gave an example of those small plants which uh, are not functioning. Now it's, as uh, Jyoti Ma'am said, is the maintenance, which is to be, because it is to be maintained in a slightly different way, but with the same kind of people. I mean, you just have to tell a person how to switch it on, switch it off, change the carbon rod, that's it. 
graphite rod. He's been given those rods, he's to just push it in. But that kind of a thing, I mean, uh, again, the other point is what ma'am told, they said interest. In fact, we could not bring in the disposal of all medical waste through this technology. CPCB in Delhi, we went presented years after years. Then finally in 2015, we could uh, uh, get this saying that everything can be disposed. Otherwise we were disposing only the uh, materials which uh, do not have any syringe or any of those things in the medical waste. So I would say, I support Jyoti Ma'am's two points. One is the probably some kind of vested interest, or I would say we do not want to shift from one to another. Change is something which we do not, uh, or we are not uh, tuned to. Other is basically, uh, we feel that we are happy with whatever is there, it is there. And in my case, it is little expensive, that is true. But we have worked out and shown also that upfront it may be expensive, but if you maintain it down the year, you are talking with sustainable uh, product. Sustainable product is very, very uh, easy to uh, have it. After five years, you will be in a much better position than what you are using today. Why incinerator gentle, uh, people work in the night? Do you know that? I mean, it's simply because you see all that which is going up the black smog. I mean, people uh, should not see. That is why you operate it in the night. Thank you so much. These, these were two enlightening, really wrong running sessions. And we thoroughly enjoyed it. And we look forward to interact with you and maybe some of the participants may also get back to you. Thank you so much for the yeah. today's sessions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Nice. Yeah. Very Thank excellent. Thank you, Dr. Vora. Yeah.